Shots in the Dark contains graphic depictions of events that may not be suitable for all listeners. We encourage all of our listeners to be open-minded and engage in dialogue with us through any of our social media accounts or email. It's boot and rally. <laughs> oh, let's not do that. I thought that's when you put your boots on and got together and like... <laughs> is that no, not... you did not think that. <laughs> I, I thought it was just like, let's organize, let's make something... Oh, no. It's... No, puke and rally. That's what it is. Boot and rally and puke and rally. Oh, I had that figured to be something very different. Yeah, no, uh, no. <laughs> so, hi. Hi. Size of maniac, maniac on the floor. That's right. I'm flash dancing all over this living room. Yeah. It only <laughs> sounds like he's by the mic because he's everywhere. Yeah. And welcome to Shots in the Dark. I'm Ty. I'm Whitney. And uh, we're just going to take our shots right now. <clears throat> yeah. So cheers with us. Anything you have in your hand but water. That's right. To taking down the patriarchy. To taking down a lot of things, please. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. So... My story's a bit rough. You're doing true crime. I'm doing true crime. Have we ever done a trigger warning for a haunting? No, I don't think we've needed to. Like, we have the disclaimer, you know, but, like, I don't think we've needed to specifically do a trigger warning. So, I do have to do a trigger warning. There is child murder in this one, so people that are more sensitive to it, definitely take a moment, gauge what you feel, and then go from there. There's also reference to suicide and cutting. So if you're sensitive to that even being discussed at all, then maybe skip forward a little bit. We're just looking out for you. Yeah. Make sure your day doesn't go to, to hell because of us. So I'm going to get into my story. Elizabeth Olton was born December 15th, 1999 in Jefferson City, Missouri. She was the daughter of Patricia Carwile Price and Dale Olton Sr., she was a fourth grade student at Pioneer Trails Elementary School in Jefferson City, a lover of music like Hannah Montana and Taylor Swift, right? You had mentioned Hannah Montana earlier and I was like, ha, ah, oh, I can't tell you. <laughs> oh, sweet little baby. She loved horses, playing with her friends, and especially enjoyed baking cookies and doing puzzles with her mother. She loved playing dress up with her animals and she was <sighs> said to be all sweetness and light, a little girl made of sugar and spice and everything nice, who loved cats, the color pink, and was a real girly girl. I am so sad already. She had long, medium brown hair, wide set eyes, and was described as a shy girl who was afraid of the dark, would not normally have gone into the woods, especially after dark. I think that that's a good life lesson yeah. in ge ge general. <laughs> yeah. Patty Price and her children, Anthony, Stephanie, and the youngest nine-year-old, Elizabeth Alton, were all at their house. Patty was starting to make dinner. She said, quote, she was going to be in a play at school, so she was practicing her lines and doing her little songs and irritating her brother, and I was getting ready to cook dinner. A six-year-old who lives across the woods knocked and asked if Elizabeth could come and play. After both girls pled with Patty, she finally agreed that she could go, but only if she was back before dinner, which is about 6 p.m. They live really close to each other. I used to go down, and I didn't live in a super safe neighborhood when I was little either. Mm -hmm. I used to go down to Terrace House constantly, and that was longer journey than this place was. I used to go over to the next cul-de-sac. It's a very small town, and everyone pretty much knows each other. I read reports that it was about a 1,000 people in this town. You'd okay. think that people were looking out for her. The little gals. Since Patty knew her daughter, Elizabeth, would be back and on time for dinner because she's deathly afraid of the dark and the sun would be setting about 6.30 as this was October in 2009. Okay. She knew that she wouldn't want to go through the woods because they were super, super dense and it would turn into a scary place once night fell. At 6 o'clock when Elizabeth hadn't made it home, Patty had called her neighbor's house to check in and see what was happening. The neighbors had told Patty that Elizabeth had not been there and is not there. The grandmother had said that the kids hadn't come to the house and that she didn't know where they were. Patty freaked out for obvious reasons, called the police to report her daughter missing, and they were there at her house in less than 15 minutes to take a statement. Being such a small town, everyone knew each other, and the tone mobilized almost immediately to find the little girl. Within two hours... Most of the town was out searching for her. The local police involved the FBI because it was a missing young child and nearby towns to help due to the large expanse of the wooded area. They looked into local registered sex offenders, had planes, helicopters, dog teams, and dive teams for the ponds and rivers, along with people on the ground also searching in a grid pattern. 
Mm -hmm. After almost 24 hours, detectives started to question the neighbor, Emma, that was last seen with Elizabeth. Wait, after how long? About 24 hours. Okay. They checked in with the grandmother. Okay. They were too busy looking for a child that was probably in danger. I'm happy you said less than 24 hours they checked back in with the... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Emma stated that she and Elizabeth were playing, and about an hour later, Elizabeth started to walk home, and she hadn't seen her since. During their play, Emma, the six-year-old, had gotten stuck in some of the thorn bushes and called for her 15 year old half sister Alyssa Bustamante to come help. She was crying because you know thorn bushes hurt. <laughs> they do. She's six, so she was like, "Help me!" <laughs> Poor little spider fly situation. Little baby. Emma, Alyssa, and Emma's twin brothers also lived with their legal guardian, their grandmother Karen Brooke. The only person that was missing during the massive search was Alyssa. Alyssa Bustamante was a 15 year old with a troubled past. She was active on social media, especially Facebook and YouTube, even posting occasionally on Twitter. I looked for them. I looked for them because sometimes people have their social media still intact. They are all now defunct. On her YouTube, she said killing people and cutting were part of her interest in hobbies. She, like many teens in 2009, put up many photos that seemed to mark her as part of the scene kid crowd. There are a lot with her having like smeared lipstick by her lips to indicate that she was bleeding. There's a bunch of pictures with her with knives or pretending to stab her friends. She was an emo. She was seen. She looks more like a scene kid. She uploaded several videos on her now taken down YouTube, Okami Kage, which is Japanese for wolf shadow. Most notably, a video of her threatening to shoot another classmate and another of her having her younger brothers touch an electric fence while she laughed and said, quote, This is where it gets good. This is where my brothers get hurt. She was born to teenage parents who were both absent during her childhood. Her dad was in prison for most of her life. It was reported by one of her friends that it was for stabbing someone, as well as felony assault. That's awful. Yeah, it's no good. On multiple different planes. That just sucks. Yeah. Her mother was an alcoholic who was reported to have abandoned her in her early ages. Her grandmother had gained guardianship when she was just seven years old. Alyssa was now being raised in what was reported as a stable and religious home with her siblings, Mormon. Oh, okay. And they're usually, they're pretty devout most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. And she was supposed to be pretty active in her church to begin with. There were a lot of things that she was supposed to be. Yeah. Alyssa was reported to be a good student, but she didn't completely apply herself in class. She started exhibiting depression and had tried to commit suicide several times since the age of 11, culminating with an attempt that landed her in both inpatient and outpatient therapy since her eighth grade year. Mm -hmm. She started seeing a therapist, sometimes on a daily basis, and taking prescription Prozac to treat her depression. Friends and classmates had said that she was known to be a bully and had exhibited violent and angry tendencies. She was notably a cutter, even reportedly carving hate into her arm and posting photos that showed scars on her upper arms, as well as along her wrist where she had attempted to kill herself. Her posts on social media had reflected what some have called, quote, dark postings, mostly photos of her glowering and mimicking violent acts. We did talk about a little bit her pretending to stab people and her herself. I mean, we did that the other day. And that's the thing, too. A lot of this is just, it's stuff that my friends said everywhere. It's teenagers, yeah. Yeah. It was all over people's MySpace, Facebook, whatever. It's like, it's still happening now. Oh, yeah. It's just, a, I feel like it's just a thing some teenagers do. Between the ages of 13 and about about 16, I went, I went through my dark phase. And I just feel like she was in her dark phase. Her journal would reflect more of the same suicidal feelings and the urge to hurt herself or others, even writing that she had wanted to burn down a house and kill all the occupants. One of her entries was that her cell phone charger was broken, which meant that she couldn't talk about what she was feeling. Quote, if I don't talk about it, I bottle it up. And when I explode, someone's going to die. A friend would later state that on Alyssa's 15th birthday, she had heard her say, quote, I just wonder what it would be like to just kill someone, see the life drain out of someone. I wonder what it would feel like, that type of power, to take that away from someone. That's awful. When investigators came to question about Elizabeth's disappearance, she was calm and was not considered a suspect initially. She said she had skipped school that day but didn't know about the disappearance or the whereabouts of Elizabeth. Meanwhile, the search team were continuing to search for Elizabeth, and some of the searchers had stumbled across a pile of dirt that had resembled a grave, and investigators had started to process the scene. Discovering more near Alyssa's house, investigators returned to question her. They brought her to the scene where she had said she had dug the holes because she liked digging holes. 
even stating that she would bury dead animals sometimes. While she was at the location, police had obtained permission to search her home. An officer noted bizarre writings on the wall in both pen and what appeared to be blood. <gasps> was it? It appeared to be blood. I don't think they ever tested it. If she oh, was but, a cutter, yeah. Okay, I'm it, sure it was probably her own blood. I think so too, yeah. It didn't come up at, again after that. It was It was just something that they noted that had existed i had a friend in high school who did not write things on her walls in blood but she did have because she had some emotional stuff going on she had some trauma in her past so her therapist had told her mother that it would maybe be a good idea since she liked to write and she wanted to be creative and get all of these emotions out of her she was like why don't you give her a wall like just like one wall in her bedroom and let her write whatever she wants to write on it. And I remember that from when I went over there is she just had an entire wall of thoughts and it was all over it. That's kind of cool though. The writings on the wall included a poem about cutting and a sketch of a person that had slashes on the neck and arms. They noted that at the very base of it, it had an identifying name, which was Emma, her little sister. Really? The six-year-old? The six-year-old. She is an asshole. This girl is an asshole. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. She sure is. They also found her journal where most of the last entry entered on the date of Elizabeth's disappearance was scratched out, save the words, quote, now I've got to go to church, LOL. Alyssa was brought to the FBI along with the journal where they used backlight technology to make out two additional words, which were slit and throat. When Alyssa was told that they had her diary, her demeanor changed and she started to tell Sergeant Rice that Elizabeth had met with an accident while they were walking through the woods, falling and hitting her head and immediately dying. When Rice had explained to her that they would recover the body and find every injury, eventually asking if Elizabeth's throat was cut, to which Alyssa replied yes. What? Is she going to try to pass it off like a mercy killing? Her grandmother started to break down and had to leave the room when Alyssa had started to confess. Yeah. It's very upsetting. After two days of searching, police were led to a shallow grave behind Alyssa's home where Elizabeth's body was covered with mud and leaves. The police officer had said it was about inches deep, shallow grave. The officer would also later recount that there were portions of the body that were visible as you looked closer. Oh, so it wasn't all covered up? No, and the reason that they didn't find it is because it was just muddy enough to look like branches when people were looking later in the evening. Oh. Alyssa had strangled, stabbed, and then slit the throat of the young girl because she, quote, wanted to know what it felt like. No. Before putting her into one of the... Two pre-dug graves that the police would later suspect were intended for her brothers. <gasps> no. What? So she's pretty much threatening her sister by drawing pictures of her on her wall. Now she has two graves dug for her two twin brothers. I've, I've seen differing reports whether or not she said that she had intended to kill both of her brothers and bury them there. And that's why they were two graves. And then some said that the police had speculated that that was the reason that there were two graves. But I'm not sure which one is 100% correct. During the trial, the true premeditation would reveal itself when Alyssa would note that she had dug the hole several days prior and had sent her little sister Emma to ask to play with Lisbeth for the purpose of luring her out of her <gasps> house to murder her. Oh my god, what if the two graves were for both of the little girls? Entries into her diary would reveal that she knew Elizabeth very well and that she even wrote about her several times. The walk through the woods was long enough that she could have decided not to harm the nine-year-old. Once again, noted by the police, they're like, it's, it's a 15-minute walk. She could have not done anything. She held Elizabeth's hand, promised her a gift, and then walked her into the woods saying, quote, I've got something really neat to show you. It's just a little bit further up here. Alyssa was already armed with a kitchen knife, and when they had reached the pre-dug grave, she began to strangle her while she was facing her. So she's looking into a very small child's face, and she looks like every little nine-year-old, too. Mm. Just right into her face, which I can't even imagine the surprise that that poor little girl had. This is so hard. It's hard. This is so hard to think of, because I just keep thinking, I've got nieces, and I can't. I can't with this shit. She attempted to strangle her several times before stabbing her six or seven times, and then eventually slitting her throat. Her diary was later able to be read, and the entry after Elizabeth's murder was, quote, I just fucking killed someone. I strangled them and slit their throat and stabbed them, and now they're dead. I don't know how to feel at the moment. It was amazing. As soon as you get over the, oh my god, spelled G-A-W-D. Sure did. I can't do this feeling. It's pretty enjoyable. I'm kind of nervous and shaky, though, right now. Okay, I gotta go to church now. LOL. Mm. 
so many thoughts. Thank you for this veil of alcohol coursing through my veins right now. <laughs> she then took a bath and attended a church party with her family. She did what? She took a bath and attended a church party with her family. No. A petition was filed asking the juvenile court to relinquish its jurisdiction over her so that she could... 